I want to talk this morning on the whispering God. The Holy Spirit is the whispering God. And let me say this right at the outset. Nothing will transform your life as much as hearing and heeding God's voice. It is the greatest blessing of every Christian is to have the opportunity to listen for and to obey the whispers of God. Now you may be at a crossroads in your life this morning. You may find that the life has been pretty tough in decisions that you have to make, where you're going to live, relationships that may just not be as, as good as you would want them to be, careers that are headed for a seeming dead end, and you need from God a fresh whisper, a fresh assurance. I want to tell you, God has whispers for you. But first, let us look at a passage of scripture. I want to read to you from the first book of Kings, chapter 19. Here is the story of Elijah. Now, Elijah had just had the great context, contest with the Baals. It's, um, it'll come on the screen in a moment. Elijah had this great contest with the Baals, and there was a 24-hour death warrant on his life. He was desperate. He faced a death threat. He was destitute and probably depressed. And he was under huge pressure. And he needed to get away. And he went, as we should always remember, when we're in moments like that, he went to Mount Horeb, which is where he, the mountain of God. And we pick up the story um, in verse 8. Elijah got up. He was feeling undernourished. He ate, he drank his fill, and he set out. Nourished by that meal, he walked 40 days and nights all the way to the mountain of God to Horeb. And when he got there, he crawled into a cave and went to sleep. Do you notice he just crawled into a cave? He really wasn't up to doing anything other. Sometimes, you know, life has its hardship. You just want to crawl away. You want to hide your way and pull the duvet over you. He crawled into a cave and he went to sleep. And then the word of God came to him and said, So, Elijah, what are you doing here? He said, I've been working my heart out for the God of the angel armies. The people of Israel have abandoned your covenant. They've destroyed the places of worship. They've murdered your prophets. And I am the only one left. And now they're trying to kill me. Then he was told, go and stand. He came in crawling. He hears the word of God, go and stand on the mountain at attention before God and God will pass by. A hurricane wind ripped through the mountains and shattered the rocks before God. But God wasn't to be found in the wind. After the wind, an earthquake. But God wasn't in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, fire. But God wasn't in the fire. And after the fire, a gentle, quiet whisper. You know, God very rarely shouts. The devil does. But he often speaks to us in a whisper. He often nudges us. He often gives us an impression. He often gives us a sense that he's wanting to say something. Why? You see, you need to draw close to someone in order to hear a whisper. Think of the picture of two lovers on a park bench when the sun shines. They whisper to each other. They whisper words of assurance, words of encouragement, words of love, words of acceptance. It's so exciting. And when we whisper, we hang on to every word. He's gentle 
in his whispers. He won't force his way in as we learn to trust him. But these whispers are powerful and they're real because we have a relationship with him. You might have read during the week of the 10 billion pound merger between WhatsApp and Facebook. And of course, everybody wants access to instant and free messaging. But God isn't a WhatsApp messenger. The Spirit of God doesn't respond to your clicking on the WhatsApp app because he wants a relationship. He wants to whisper. And today, God is whispering to you and he is whispering to me. And it is the greatest privilege, certainly of my life, to be able to walk and hear those whispers of God. But when we look at Elijah, do you know, God was not in the wind. But on the day of Pentecost, God was in the wind. And you may feel that the winds of change in your relationships, in your places of, of work, that the winds of change are blowing through your life. These are big winds, yes, and God, of course, could be in them. You may feel that there is an earthquake in your life, the earthquake of bereavement or loss or ill health or disappointment. Of course, God could be in those. He was as we read in Acts, in an earthquake that saw the Philippian jailer converted. God can be in the fire, you know, the fires of temptation that come upon us that when we burn with, with desire that is not from God, those warning, of course he is there. But you see, in the case of Elijah, Elijah's head was like you and me in many cases. It was just stuffed full of all the noise, all the stuff, all the issues around it. Do you know that feeling? There's just so much, so much at work, so much at travel, so much in family, in relationships. The speed with which we deal with our WhatsApp or any of our, any of our apps, the constant, just the constant 24 seven pressure and stuff of our lives. That's what you and I go through every day of the week. And so Elijah's head was filled with all of the stuff, which is why he crawled into the cave, but he stood up when God spoke to him. And that's true for you and me today, that we hear his voice, we hear those whispers, and we know that he needs to quieten our spirit as he needed to quieten Elijah. There was just too much going on in his head. He was about to be killed, he was desperate, he was depressed, he was destitute, he was hungry. But God spoke those gentle words in a whisper. Now the Holy Spirit has got a whispering campaign. And these are some of those areas where he whispers to us. The Spirit of God whispers to wake faith. I remember this time of my life 40 years ago. We had the great privilege, Nikki, uh, myself, Nikki Lee, and several others went back to Cambridge University where 40 years ago our faith came alive. You can hardly believe it's 40 years on. And it was extraordinary just to remember those moments those moments when actually life was just carrying on in a very sort of happy way and then there was a whisper from God in my life. I just mentioned him, remember, it wasn't an audible voice. It was filled with some doubt and uncertainty. But it was a nudge, a sense that God was wanting to say something. And what he wanted to say was, I love you and you can have a relationship with me. You just need to put your trust with me. And as I did that, there was awakening, an excitement, a quickening that covered all the other doubts and noise. 
And if you're hearing this message here today for the first time, allow God just to waken a desire for his love to come into your life today. The Spirit of God whispers in worship. I don't know what you think about worship. It's one of the important why we, why we, we don't just look at a performance, but why we participate in the worship. Because God speaks to us in the worship. And if you don't want to hear God's voice, that's fine. It's up to you. But if you do, then pay attention to the worship. You know, sometimes people say, well, it is highly emotional stuff, you know, it's, uh, don't pay too much attention. No. God speaks to our spirits in the time of worship. I remember a time of worship in uh, Onslow Square where I was just praying and had a sense in the worship of God speaking to me about Caleb. And Caleb saying, we, is the one person of the Old Testament who you might remember went into Canaan and came back and said, I know there are giants, but we can surely do this. He was a can-do person, just a word I needed to face major changes in my life. And as soon as the worship had ended, someone came up to me and said, can I pray for you? I said, yeah. And he said, I just have one word. Caleb. I thought, wow. I remember going to a, a conference once some years ago, a formative time of my life. I was right at the back. I didn't want to go anywhere close to where everybody was um, enthusiastically singing on. It wasn't a great time of my life. And I was just in the back listening. And during the worship, I sensed the words of, of, of the Lord saying to me, how many have I got who know what my spirit is doing, who I could send? And I said, wow. Wow. If you haven't got anyone else, send me. He whispers in our worship. He whispers through his word. I remember it quite recently a time when you know, I was trying to work out, you know, as we all do, what does the next step of my life hold? And there was quite a moment when I just started feeling that, you know, I don't know, but, but there is a quietness about God speaking. And I opened my Bible and I believe he led me to Psalm 107, which said this, he stilled the storm to a whisper. The waves of the sea were hushed. They were glad when it grew calm and he guided them to their desired haven. You know, it's when the calm comes in our lives, when the peace comes, when the storms of life are stilled to a hush, that's the moment when he can speak and we can hear those whispers. And he speaks to us at work, which is why I think it's so important that we, we actually prepare ourselves in the morning for work. I remember praying one morning and the reading was from Psalm 112 surely the righteous will never be shaken they'll be remembered forever they will have no fear of bad news their hearts are steadfast trusting in the Lord they will have no fear of bad news I remember going into work when the chairman called me in and said to me we are going to make a change on one of your key accounts and you're going to be taken off the account as the chief relationship person. Well, I was devastated. And he then said, which was even worse, that he was going to put someone else on it and the person was hopeless in my view. Didn't have any idea of what was going on. Far worse than I was. Why do you want to make this change? I could do it. Far better. You know, you know the, the debates that go on in one's mind. And it's an interesting thing. You should... That at that moment, of course, I mean, I went out absolutely miserable, furious, steam coming out of my ears, etc. And about lunchtime, I remembered the verse. They will not fear bad news. Of course there's bad news. Of course it was gutting 
to have this news. But actually, from then on, I didn't fear it. I knew that the Spirit of God had spoken already and that that was going to be true. And the question is, which dialogue are you going to listen to? There are dialogues that go on in, in all our lives. They're the dialogues of the Spirit of God whispering and then they're the dialogues of the devil wailing and screaming and, and trying to distract us. Which are you going to listen to? Well, listen to the Word of God as he whispers. And during the working day, allow him to whisper to you a word of forgiveness for a colleague that has really annoyed you. <laughs> allow, allow him to, to act an act of kindness to someone who needs it or assurance. God whispers in the walk as we walk through life. I remember uh, being at a conference, and it was a particularly dull conference. Um, and I didn't know why I was there, and I didn't want to be there. And I got there, I sort of looked around, and pretty soon went back to my desk to work. And as I was at my desk, there was a sort of sense of go back to the conference. And I thought, well, why ever would I want to do that? Um, and the nudge was, you know, go back. So I went back, I listened to the rest of the conference. It was as dull as the first bit of the conference. And I thought, right, you happy, God? I've listened, I've come, thank you very much, it's over. And I got onto the underground train. And as I got onto the train, I saw someone who had a badge on. And the badge that he had on showed that he'd been to the conference. And I said to him, oh hi, have you been to the conference? Yeah. I said to him, what was your take? And he said, well, the thing that I'm really wondering about is, you know, what, is, what does the Spirit of God do in your life? Well, I said, the Spirit of God makes all the difference. He changes, gives you the energy for life. He enables you to, to, to actually face the day. He assures you don't have to fear bad news. And then you know, the next stop, and then I was carrying on to when the next stop went by in the underground, and then we were at Bank Station, and I had to get out. And he, I, he said, can I get out with you? And I said, well, yes. Um, <laughs> and then he said, will you pray for me? Here? <laughs> in my suit? <laughs> and I prayed for him, and the Spirit of God came on him. And his life was changed. I'd love to meet him sometime. See how he's gone on. But it was one whisper. I have a similar, similar story. I was traveling in South Africa. I was on business. And I was just checking in where I saw someone who I'd vaguely known. And I had this whisper of saying, talk to him. It's seven o'clock in the morning. Um, and so I said to him, oh, hello, hi, how are you? Where are you going? He said, well, I'm going to Cape Town. I said, well, I'm going to Cape Town as well. Um, and he said, um, I said, would you like a cup of coffee? And he said, yeah, I'd love a cup of coffee. So we went and we sat literally opposite the gate where the airplane was going to take off. And I was talking to him and we missed the flight. Um, <laughs> which could not be more maddening than anything you can imagine. Anyway, he'd missed his flight. He didn't have a flexible ticket. I helped him sort his bit out. I sensed that this was this word, this whispers. They were constant. Eventually, we got on to the next flight. Um, I got in. I was on business. I was traveling in business class. Um, and I was just looking forward to a cup of coffee and a newspaper. And I looked back and saw him in the back of the airplane. And a little whisper said, um, unfortunately, there was somebody sitting next to him. Um, and a little whisper said, ask the guy next to him to swap with you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> business, back of plane. <laughs> you sure? Yep. So I went up to the guy and said to him, um, hey, do you mind swapping? So he looked rather grumpily and said, well, where, where are you sitting? And I said, well, up there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and for the next two and a half hours, I was able to talk to this guy about the issues in his life, which were many, 
and about the wonderful way in which the Spirit of God brings the forgiveness of God, the life of God, the energy of God, the passion of life to him and to his life. God whispers through Wi-Fi. On your Twitter, some mornings you wake up and you get a tweet and it just lifts your heart. Or you read the Bible in one year on a wireless device. God's pretty digital when it comes to whispering. And God whispers through the world. You know, we live in this world it's God's world. And yet when we look around, it's broken. It's painful. You, don't, you just have to open a newspaper. You have to read a, a comment, see the television, watch the online feeds that, that you get. Hey, and by the way, you know, we talk about digital feeds. I just sometimes wonder what kind of food is coming into our spirits is it always wholesome or does the dark net manage to come in? But the world around us, in all its pain and all its joy, there are moments of great joy, great art, great theater, great achievements, a great day working in the office when you've really felt you've done what God has asked you to do. You've worked hard, you've done a great document, you've got a marketing plan, you feel good about it, life couldn't be better. But we live in this world and the question that we must ask ourselves is if God is whispering to you and to me but what are you going to do about this world around us? What hope is there for our nation? What is that hope? Here is the New Statesman with a great front page cover, The God Gap. Will we regret pushing Christians out of public life? We sure will. We sure will but then you and I have got to do the other side of it which is to hear a whisper and be prepared to act on that whisper, to hear and to heed the whispers of God in the world around us. And the world around us, as we know, is what we long for in the nation. We're not longing for the nation for, to have them everybody come into a church, though I personally would love that to happen. But there are things that our God the Father has created. He has created us to be generous. We want the nation to be generous, gracious, welcoming to outsiders contented, hard-working, properly rewarded, fairly rewarded, and a civilized society. These are the hopes that we have for our nation. And we need to hear the whispers of God because the nation will never hear this message of hope unless those of us like you and I will respond to the whispers of God through his word, in prayer, through others, and, and as he speaks to us each day. So you may say to yourself, yeah, I see it wake, I see it in worship, I hear the God in his, through his word, at work, walking through life, whispering in Wi-Fi, whispering through the world. But hey, how I want to hear, I want to heed. How do I do that in practice? Well, let me tell you something simply in 3D. The first D, desire to hear. It is so important. If you've got all the stuff going on in your life, you've got a lot of things you can desire. You can desire money, fashion, security, the future, friendship, whatever you want. But if you desire God, he will be attentive and the links will be established. You'll go online. Straight may not be an instant messaging system, but you'll go online. You'll hear the voice, you'll hear his whispers. If the desires of your heart are such that you long to say, Lord, I want to hear, I want to hear your whispers. So I want to quieten all the stuff in my life and allow you to speak so that I hear the signal and not the noise that is all around us. The second First is desire to hear his voice. The second is dredge to clear. Dredge to clear. Let me show you a picture. Do you recognize that? We've all seen the floods everywhere in the nation, haven't we? And there are many causes of them, but one of them is that the rivers 
have overflown their banks. And if those rivers overflow their banks, one of the ways that we could help is actually to dredge and to clear the silt, to clear the stuff, all the, all the sort of extra stuff that accumulates in our lives. Clear it out. You see, over any course of a day, over a week, over a month, all sorts of stuff comes into our life that we wouldn't want to have. Anger, despair, greed. And these things build up resentment. Dredged to clear the channel, to clear our lives such that we can hear the whispers of God. And let me tell you this, one other extraordinary phenomenon. There are sinking holes. And these sinking holes are completely unrelated to where those rivers have burst their banks. They come up un un without warning. And so it is with our lives. That if you allow the rivers to overflow and to the floodplains to, to, to burst their banks all over, then you will find sinking holes, things that you didn't expect, traps for you to fall into, moments that you'd hoped wasn't there, circumstances would overwhelm you, just holes that you just fall into and you can't get out of, dredged to clear, and thirdly, deepen to stay near deepen, to stay near. We need to be near to God. We can't make up the whispers. We can't press an app. But he's whispering to us. Are we going to put ourselves in a position where we deepen the relationship with him through prayer, through reading the Bible, through meeting people, through being generous with our time and our energy and our money? And let me say this to you. The best whispers of God in your life are yet to come. The biggest whispers in your life are in the future. You may think God has whispered to you and spoken to you in the past, but I really believe that the best whispers for your life are yet to come. And we want to pray that in today, that we can see the best whispers of God as we grow from glory into glory and are called into this world to hear what you've heard to date is nothing as to what you will hear. And you know, when Elijah heard this word of God, what did he do? How did he respond? You know, he was in that cave and suddenly that cave was completely transformed. How did he respond? Well, the moment, of course, there was the question to Elijah, Elijah, what are you doing here? And God spoke to him and said to him in very clear language, this is what the Lord said to him, go back the way you came and go to the desert of Damascus. Go back the way you came. Do you know when we run away from the big issues of life, the desperation and sometimes the depression and the hardship, Actually, we go to God and God says, go back to where you are, to your job, which I know is hard, to the relationship which is difficult, to the issues that you have to face which are even more difficult. Go back, because you go back with the whispers of God, the soft, gentle whispers. And I wondered what God whispered to Elijah. We don't know. But I've often wondered what it was that he said that was so extraordinary that Elijah got up immediately. He put his cloak over the face, over his face, and he went out and stood there to hear God. And then God said to him, Go and do something political. Go and anoint King Hazel. Go and anoint the king of Judah. It was an entirely political act. When God speaks, he doesn't just speak for us to be quiet amongst ourselves. He means it to have a wide effect on the community and the people around. And secondly, he said, go and anoint Elisha as the next prophet to succeed you. And go and speak to the 7,000 other people who had not bowed their knee to, the, to Baal and who were ready to take on 
and hear the whispers of God for the next generation. In one whisper, three generations of the people of Israel were changed and their successors prophetically, politically, and the people were in place to hear God's word. One whisper secured the prophetic and political future for the generations that were to come. And it is true for you and me today, one whisper. And we could hear and see our lives, our families, our relationships, our schools translate. Why? Because it's the whispers of God. And I know you may say, yes, you know, I understand God whispering, but you know, and I go through it. I'm not sure it's God who go through that, but I want to assure you of one thing. There is one whisper of God that is so clear, so powerful, so unambiguous, so unequivocal, so unquestionable, so audible as to be unmistakable And that whisper, when he whispers to us, grows within each one of us and grows within us collectively so loudly, so strongly, like the dome of St. Paul's Cathedral and that whispering gallery around the tomb where, where you can hear something just going right around. It sounds so loud, so clear, so powerful. And that is when God whispers to you and to me about our worth to him, our value to him, of his death that Jesus died on a cross for you and for me. And you may say to yourself, I'm worthless. No, you may be unworthy, but you're not worthless because he has given us all the worth of the Godhead all that was available to Jesus when he died on the cross that was available to God the Father, the Son and the Spirit is given to you, to me. When Jesus came and died, he affirmed our worth. And when he whispers of your worth to him, you will never be mistaken. I promise you that there is one thing that will change your life if you heed, if you hear and you heed the whispers of God. We're about to have communion and I want to read one of the ancient prayers of the church as a reminder to us that we are worth so much to God because he gave his son for you and for me, here it is in the old language of centuries that it has survived. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body and our souls washed through his most precious blood and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen.